Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. And today is June 6th, and June 6th is the anniversary, the 74th anniversary actually, of the D-Day Normandy landings. And uh, you might be looking at all of this uh, World War II clothing in front of you. And this actually, all stuff right here belonged to my grandfather, uh, Nicholas Georges. He fought with the 1st Infantry Division, the Big Red One, which is on his sleeve right here. And the Big Red One fought on uh, Omaha Beach, and my grandfather was on the very first day of Omaha, fought throughout the war through Operation Cobra, the Breakout, the, uh, the Hurtigan Forest, and all the way into the Battle of Aachen. And then eventually, the Big Red One moved into Czechoslovakia, where he, my grandfather survived the war, thankfully, and uh, made it through the entire thing. He did get shot twice, had two Purple Hearts, but uh, they were not uh, life-threatening wounds by any means, but one of them was one of those million-dollar shots, where they call it, where he was on a second-story building, and he was sprayed through the floorboards by machine gun fire and took one in the rear end. <laughs> and that was his million-dollar thing. It only put him out of commission for a few weeks before he was back with his troops. But in remembrance uh, of D-Day, what I thought I would do is show you some of the uniform pieces right here, especially since we're going to be doing some uh, some figure painting in the very near future as soon as we have that, that special guest that's going to come and help us. But I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to show you the, the real colors of some of the uniform. Because a lot of times we just paint the stuff based on what the way the box art looks. But this is all stuff from World War II, which I'll show you a little bit closer in a few seconds here. But the varying um, color differences between each one of the pieces is just really incredible and it's really amazing to see what the actual real colors looked like. So this won't be a very long video. We'll kind of look over the uniform and talk about some of the pieces on it there. Uh, just This is just like a, a little something different. I built so much stuff with uh, World War II military stuff. I thought this would be a perfect opportunity in remembrance of D-Day that we take this and show you guys all the different stuff. So let's get started on it. One combat photo that was taken on June 6th uh, uh, on the Normandy landings and the one I circle right here is my grandfather coming off the landing craft on Omaha Beach. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the, uh, the what a lot of people call the Eisenhower jacket. It's kind of short and only went up to just about the waist, so it wasn't a long coat. Now, this has been set up basically after the war and how he came home in this. The first thing you'll see right here is his 1st Infantry Division patch, and that is worn on the right side of the thing, and that is your the main unit you belong to. And you might be looking at this one right here, and this was an 8th Armor patch. And when I first got this, I had never, my grandmother had found this and had given it to me. And I was wondering, where did the 8th armor come from? Because I always just knew him to be in the 1st Infantry Division. And it turned out, near the end of the war, his unit was in Czechoslovakia, as I was saying earlier. And they needed to fill in some of the ranks with 8th armor. So they grabbed him and a few other men and said, you're now part of 8th armor. And he still maintained his 1st Infantry Division, but on the left side is the, uh, the unit that you're assigned to. And I think it's kind of, a, kind of unusual to see the stitching, the way that, you know, the cross stitching, the way the, uh, the patch would have been put on during that time. And then on here, he's got a few other things. First thing I'll show you, this is his, uh, his Infantry badge. And if you'll notice right off, it's all made out of sewn metal. So this was something that was, he probably had done in like England or somewhere in Europe during the war and uh, quite, quite some good detail that they did, all with sewn wire basically. Put it back down here. Uh, we have, these are the, the me, not medals, but the, uh, the badges, I can't think of the right word right now, for the 16th Infantry Regiment. And then underneath there we have, this is the the Victory in Europe medal. Purple Heart for being wounded. This was a good conduct medal, so I guess he was uh, didn't get into any trouble over there. And finally, we have the uh, it's the European, Middle East, and African uh, campaign battle, uh, medal. 
and on it you'll notice that there are five stars and that represents five major uh, campaigns or battles that we'll call it right there. On this arm we have the stripes on the arm here. These represent, each one of these is six months in the uh, in overseas campaign. So almost two and a half years I believe he was over there. And the last thing you guys may know of it is called the ruptured duck. And it's actually an eagle that they would have sewn on there. And if you were uh, if you were honorably discharged, you got to wear that on your uniform to prove that you were honorably discharged. And I guess the soldiers thought it looked more like a duck than an eagle. So, but it's just quite interesting to see the quality. This is all all wool material and just very very nicely made. You know, considering that it was going to be, I don't know if this is one that you kind of jacket he'd use in combat as much. I don't have his full uniform. Over the years, you know, things were like that were used and kind of destroyed. But I'm really happy to have this. And we also have the uh, the hat that goes with this, with the blue infantry uh, piece across the top here, cord. And now that we've seen the color of this particular uniform right here, I also thought I'd take and show you these. These are the wool trousers, or pants, that he uh, would have worn. And it's amazing to see the workmanship inside of all this. But... The main thing you want to take away from this is look at the color variation between the dye lots on, the, on this olive drab type of, type of look. And that, that holds true too on some of his hats that he had. Now this is the, the main hat that you can see it's the same, same color as this. But uh, Plus you can also see some of the other colors of uniform that they would wear. Then he also had this, this tan hat too. And he had his his number 6814 stamped throughout all of these different materials. Plus, I did find like this this piece right here, and I believe this is like just you know accessories that they would keep things in. And inside of it was, I believe, the mirror that he would have used. It's actually just a piece of metal that looks like they've put like a the equivalent of like a mylar coating on it. I'm assuming this is from World War II. It's been, it was part of all of this stuff when we got it out. And I've talked to a few people and they believe that this would have been the type of, you know, signaling mirror, or shaving mirror, or whatever they would use it for. Because it's not made out of glass, so it's, you know, it's going to hold up pretty well. We also had a tie. I don't know if this tie went with this particular thing because it is a lot lighter, but it may have gone with the type of shirt. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the shirts. And the last thing that I want to show you is one of the things that I'm very grateful to have. I think it's one of the coolest pieces. And this was his great coat that he had used. And just if you've never held one of these in real life, these things are really heavy. This is all wool and all nicely lined inside there. You can see all the lining and the, the, the care and workmanship that they would have put into something like this in the 1940s. And... You flip back this little tab right here. This is like the maker's mark here. And it was produced in May 26, 1943. And it tells you all this. And my grandfather was a 36 regular, which uh, uh, even in my even my high school days, I was about a 40 regular. So he, they were a lot smaller people back then, I guess. But 36 regular is pretty small. Now, when I was younger, I could actually get this on. But... Uh, that is not happening anytime soon, but just wanted to show you the color of this. Now this has the Bakelite buttons on it, which Bakelite was like the plastic substitute back in the 40s. It's got all the Bakelite buttons on it. And one thing I don't have here, but I did find in there, it's kind of, kind of a cool little thing too. When I first got this, I was digging around in the pockets, and inside one of the pockets I found just a, a little piece of paper that was printed out. He came home after the war on the Queen Elizabeth, the, uh, the cruise ship. And he had a little birthing thing in there that talked about where, where, he, where he was stationed inside there and when his mess hall time was and just stuff like that. Just a, just a little piece of paper that was printed out, but it was really cool to get it. Uh, I have that packed away somewhere right now. But once again, just showing you the different lots of uh, olive drab that would have been on this, this type of, or oh, yeah, OD olive drab type of material it would have on it. So I want to thank you guys for joining me on this uh, video of remembrance on the anniversary of the D-Day Normandy landings and the thousands of soldiers, sailors, and airmen of many nations who sacrificed so much for future generations. Uh, I thank them from the bottom of my heart. And of course, I'd also like to thank all the present-day troops and all of the, uh, the great sacrifices they make for us. 
Now obviously you know I love to uh, model World War II. It's my favorite subject when I'm, when I'm doing any type of modeling. But sometimes we forget about the, uh, the actual people who lived and fought and suffered or some who even paid the ultimate sacrifice for, for our freedoms today. And I just wanted to give a little shout out, a little thank you and on this day. It's a, it's a big special day for me too, you know, having my grandfather that had served during World War II. So I want to thank you for joining me and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.